let's talk diagrams. Before we start, what do we think an architectural diagram is? What is the point of a diagram? Who knows? Who wants to guess? What's the point of an architectural diagram? Does it highlight certain information? Yes, it does highlight certain information. It highlights a very specific chunk of information. So when you say certain, that's exactly right because we're disregarding everything else and only showing off that one piece of information at a time. So yes, correct. So architectural diagramming, our intent is to go from this, all of the information, to this, one certain piece of information. All right. So where are diagrams used? Competition panels, client presentations, analysis of precedent, and what we are doing, conceptual communication. Let's have a look at some competition panels just quickly. So these are all just competition panels sourced from online just to give you an idea of how diagramming is used in architectural practice. And that is to communicate ideas as quickly as possible to people who might not have a lot of time. The number one thing for that is, of course, competitions. They're going to spend a minute, two minutes, five minutes, if you're lucky, looking at your panel before moving on to someone else. So the quickest way to get across that information is architectural diagramming. So each of these panels, you'll see diagramming is a big part of what they do to get across their ideas very, very quickly. So basics of diagrams. I've taken a few pages here from your essential readings, but I do recommend you go back into your reading list, read through the book so that you understand it yourself. So there's a few different types of diagrams, and we'll go through the catalogue now. So this type of diagram is very, very basic, and we can just call it, these are the shapes. This is a square, this is a circle inside a square, etc. So you might imagine that your building plan form, at its most basic root, is a square with a circle inside it. And this would be a diagram of that. And that's just called a these are the shapes diagram. Another diagram would be how I got to the shapes. So you might start at a cube and then you carve away corners from each end of the cube, you take out a central mass of the cube, and then you slice off an entrance area at a triangle angle, and that's where we get inside. So you create a diagram series that goes from that very start, shows each of those tasks that you've done, and then you end up at the final product. How I got the shapes. How the pieces relate is another diagram type. You'll see this a lot as we move into second year and third year. You might even be doing it this semester for design where you get asked to talk about how the different pieces of your design relate to one another. And so this is a critical diagram that helps you do that. And so you explode out the parts, usually in an exploded axonometric, and you say, these are the different parts of my design. Collectively, they equal, or the sum of the parts, equal my concept. Uh, another one of your precedents is this book here, Precedents in Architecture, another one of your readings, sorry. So this is a little bit different. These are more pragmatic diagrams, or what we would call old school diagrams. So they're more a literal sense of what's going on in the building. And they kind of unpick everything that the architect was trying to do in a very, very rigid, pragmatic, almost mathematical style to what they do. A little bit different to what we're doing, but I just want to show you all of the different types of diagrams. So we can see here, this is the actual building. Then we diagram it on the next page. This is the structure. This is how the natural light comes in. This is the plan relative to the section. This is how circulation works, et cetera, et cetera. These are the types of diagrams you'll be doing next year with Francesco's class. OK, more diagram types. This next one is the step-by-step -step form generation. So we start here at the top. We shave off some signs. We split it apart. We split it again to allow for access. And we end up with this building. That's a step-by-step. We start with a prism, we divide it, we adjust it, we reduce it, we levitate it, we pull it apart, we modify it, and we end up with the final product, step-by-step -step diagram. Once again, how that building might work in two different ways, horizontally, vertically. And again, how we've joined together multiple forms, objects, to end up with the final outcome. There we go again. All right, design alternatives explored. Now, this is one that your design lecturers love to see. And they're always asking for process and iteration. Iteration being the key word of how did you get to this final product? Right? They always want to know that. Is it just the first literal idea you had in your head? 
I wanted it to look like a heart, so now my building's shaped like a heart. You know every unit coordinator hates to hear that. So instead, your counter-argument is this. Well, I tested all of these different ideas, and these are all of the different iterations that I went through, but I still think the building should look like this. And then your argument is bolstered because you have this catalog of diagrams that help you demonstrate that you actually have done all the work to get to this point. Same again. Again, but this time in section instead of axonometric. So you might test multiple ideas of one spatial quality. You say, well, what does this section need to feel like in order to maximise this spatial experience? Test section A, test section B, et cetera, et cetera, until you come across the final outcome, and then that helps you arrive at your form. Same thing, but in a urban scale. And then this time, I like this diagram, it's kind of cute. It's a hockey slash basketball rig, but thinking about all the different ways that architecture might interact with that to create different experiences for people. Same program, just slightly different architectural shell. This one's a little bit blurry, but you can get the gist of it. Same piece of material, manipulated in different ways to give people a different urban experience of how they might interact with that space. Some sitting, some lying down, some spaces that cause people to talk to each other, some that allow them to ignore each other, etc. Some of the parts diagrams. So this plus this plus this equals this. Another helpful diagram for you guys. More sophisticated version of exactly the same thing. And then once again. So you'll come across this when you get into complex buildings in fourth year, when you start to do like a university building or a hospital or something like that. You'll have to rationalise all of the different parts of the building, and these are a really helpful diagram for you to do that. So you can say these are all the chunks, these are all the programmatic elements, here's a diagram that says where they all go. Same thing again, but vertically instead. Now this is what we're doing, articulating core concepts diagrams. This is what we're doing for this assignment. So they're unpicking what the architect has done and what the building achieves in a series of diagrams. Each diagram is a different concept. Collectively, all eight concepts are the building. Right? That's what we're doing. Same thing here, different concepts. Same thing, this is just one diagram illustrating one concept. This is a plan version. This is a section version. Plan, can't really see what's going on, but when we view it in section, we can see that it's talking about the fact that we now have dialogue between people at different layers. We're intentionally creating these offset circles so that these people can talk to these people. Same diagram series again and again, etc. Okay, so now is the crux point, and I'll slow down a little bit now because this is the step by step of how we create our own conceptual diagrams, what we're doing for this assignment. So, step one is to ask yourself the question what is the concept we want to communicate? Okay. And where does this come from? Where do we figure out what the concept is that we want to communicate? In the process and sketches work that we did or that we need to continue to do in the next assignment. So that research and analysis of your case study, your readings, your writing, your sketching, your thinking, the interviews you watch, all of that stuff, that's where you pull out your core concepts. And then you spread them all out, your eight core concepts. Now we move on to the next step. Step two, what drawing type will best show this concept? So if you have a concept about visual connection between two different people, you might argue that, well, it, that's kind of a three-dimensional thing spatially, so it needs to be either a section or an axonometric in order for me to be able to show two different people communicating. So I know it's not going to be a plan. Okay? And so you do that for each of your concepts which drawing type is best to communicate this specific concept. Step three, get your existing drawings from AutoCAD or from uh, hand drawing, if that's what you're doing, if you're doing this in another unit, and take just what you need. So if you're doing this by hand for design, per se, you would use some tracing paper to draw over the top of your drawing just the lines that you need, omitting anything that's not relevant to that concept specifically. If you're doing it by CAD, like we are for this unit, you copy your existing drawing and then you delete everything that's not relevant, 
only the things that are 100% relevant do you take through. And then you move, rotate, copy, do whatever you need to do to the drawing to layer in that extra little bit of stuff that helps you communicate it. And then step four, we layer in information. So you add textures, you add people, you add colour, shadow, light, whatever you need to do in order to better articulate that. And then you hard line, which is where you bump up the line weight of the outer edge. So most diagrams you'll see have a thick outer line so that they can bounce off the page. And they always use that thick line just like we do in architectural drawing to show the thing that we want to look at the most. So that hard lining step is really critical because that's saying, hey Chris, this is the bit of the concept that I want you to see. Look at this part of the drawing. Step five, final step, annotate very briefly what's going on. So you want to add a very small amount of text under the diagram to articulate to the viewer what they are looking at. And it should be a very small caption. I like to think of it as two parts. First part, adjective, so a descriptive word that is describing what we're looking at. Second part, verb, how it's been achieved. So for example, uh, we have visual connection, so that's our uh, adjective, and then the verb through a section of arches that allow transparency between spaces. Right? And so you've got that adjective verb going on. What's the descriptor? What are we trying to do? Verb, how has it been achieved? Those are the two parts of the annotation. Now, this part here I say with caution. You can add on top of the actual drawing itself little words that might help you or little arrows that might help say this is the direction we're going, for example, if it's the circulation diagram or something like that. But just be very careful. They can ruin the diagram very quickly and you're better off to just let the drawing do the talking. So caution on that last one. All right. Hopefully this works. Let's have a look at how I follow these steps for Studio Bright, Allow, Haha. -ha. Okay, so this is a Studio Bright Ruckus Hill House, which you'll recognise from the video tutorials. And so I've done my research and I've gone through here and I've looked at all of these different images to help me get an understanding. I've read through their writings, I've listened to interviews, looked at their paper and the institute or the architect magazine, whatever it is, and then I've got an understanding of what's going on. But I can garner the spatial qualities by looking through the drawings, by looking through the spaces, the collages, photos, everything. So that's all there and all very important. So I've done that stage. Now I move on to step one, which was, what are the eight concepts I want to show? So what's the concept we're trying to show? And this is my series of concepts. So you, this will give you an appreciation. These also happen to be the annotations as well. So the house centres around dual courtyards, water and garden. Arches bridge sleeping and living and connect dual courtyards visually. Like hidden gems, there are scattered moments of intense and concentrated colour. Curves mark transition and threshold between spaces, etc. So I've gone through this process and I've vetted my thinking and culled it back down to a top eight. These are the top eight concepts that I believe is going on in Rucker's Hill House by Studio Bright. Step two, what are the best drawing types to show each of these concepts? So for every single one of them, should I be using a plan, section, elevation, axle, or perspective? Those are my five options. Which one is going to help me communicate this idea most succinctly, most clearly? And then I do that. I follow through that step. House centre is around dual courtyards, water, and garden. Plant, that makes a lot of sense. Arches bridge sleeping and living and connect dual courtyards visually. It's a visual thing about people seeing each other, so section makes sense for that one. Skipping down to number six, shared material ties together existing and new elements in the street. That's an elevation. We're talking about a streetscape here, so that needs to be an elevation. Seven moments of pause are enhanced with view lines. View lines I know from this house are going to be going in multiple angles and directions. That needs to be an axonometric. And then finally, important spaces receive special detail and attention. Special detail and attention I can do myself by making a nice little perspective diagram. So I do that. So I've gone through that step two to figure out all of the different drawing types for each of my concepts. Step three, simplify your existing drawings down to the absolute essentials. The purer the better. So this is in AutoCAD. Remember I've made a copy of this first, so I've done a save as 
before I've moved on to start deleting because we don't want to delete anything we don't need to. So as you can see here, compared to the original drawing, everything has been stripped out. So only that which is relevant to what we're trying to communicate is left in. Everything else is stripped out. So the whole house is missing from the section here on both sides. The rest of the axonometric is missing from here. None of that uh, material, shadow, all of that stuff from the elevation is there. Most of the plan is gone. So we've only got just the pure essentials that help us communicate those concepts. Step four, import the drawings into Illustrator and build conceptual layers. That's what this week's video was and what we're going to do in class today. And here we go. So this is the plan existing with all of the stuff on there. And then this is when it's brought into Illustrator. And we've now done all that extra layering. We've put the color in. I've done a hard line. We can see this is a hard line around the edge because this is the part that's centering. So the hard line is corresponding to the annotation. The house centers. So this is the house, and it's centering around dual courtyards, water and garden. Water, I've emphasized with this color. Garden, I've emphasized with this color, and the trees, right? And then I've done that for each of the different diagrams until I have my eight diagrams set. And so that's it. That is the process. Does that make sense to everybody? Four-step process, that's diagramming. So the most important thing is that you think critically about what the concepts are. And you really can't do this unless you go back into your research of your case study, you do some more sketching, you do some more thinking, and you visualise what the core concepts are of the house. Now, this will actually form part of your process drawings that you need to pin up for the next submission. So this will bolster your case study process work because you should be by hand sketching out what you think your diagrams might be. Sketch out what you think the key concepts are and that's going to help you visualise what they need to be as well. It's also going to help you test what the concept and drawing type need to be. So you can write down your concept and then you can sketch it in plan and go, actually, plan's not quite right. Sketch it again in section, mm, still not doing it for me. Actually, yep, that's the one. And so you'll have this collection of sketches which you add to your process and add to the assessment overall. The more astute and thoughtful the concept will be, and the more relevant to the case study, the better the diagram will be. So just make sure you're being critical of the architecture and really understanding what the essence is. Any questions? Anyone have any questions? No? Okay. Let's go. We'll see you in class at 10 and we'll get stuck into diagramming together now.